In this tutorial video, we're going to see how to use reflection in Java and more precisely how to inspect um, a class object. So in this example, we're going to be using our classes animal and dog that we've used previously in many, many examples. So um, I'm not going to go through the entire list of things we can inspect because it's just too long. But as you well know, um, for more details, all you have to do is go to the uh, Oracle website, um, this link precisely for reflection concerning classes. So uh, you can find the list of everything you can inspect inside an object class here. So in this example, however, in this step, we're going to see how to inspect the superclass of a class. So in this case, we want to determine or inspect the superclass of our class dog here using this method here. So dog.class.getSuperclass. It's as simple as that. Uh, let's run our program. As you can see, the superclass of the dog class is class animal. So this method returns the superclass of a class. Uh, just to see if that's the case, uh, let's just look at our class diagram. And as you can see, yes, dog extends uh, animal. So animal is the superclass of dog. In this step, we're going to see how to um, inspect methods of a class. So in order to do that, we first have to import the Java language reflection method package here. Then once we've done that, as you can see, we're instantiating uh, an object Name C in this case of type class using the uh, animal uh, constructor from the animal class. And then um, we are creating a, an array or table of type method named M. And inside that uh, array or table, we are um, using the uh, get methods uh, method on our variable C that we created just before. And then, uh, then we are simply just printing out uh, the length uh, or how many, should I say, methods there are in the class with this instruction. And then, <coughs> then basically using a for loop to uh, print out the actual um, names of the methods in the class. So let's run the program. And as you can see, so this first instruction gives us there are 11 methods in the class and then uh, the for loop is going to print out as I said the names of those um, methods so as you can see we have the uh, methods that we created ourselves and then we have the default methods of the class uh, just underneath so let's just check if uh, these two methods are at least inside it and as you can see they are. And finally, in this step, we're going to see how to inspect the fields of a class. So again, in order to do that, we have to import the Java language reflection field package. And then once that's done, same principle, we are creating an object of type class named C using the animal constructor and then uh, we're creating an array or table of type field uh, named F, uh, M in this case, sorry. And then we're using the get, the get fields method uh, from this package up here. And then uh, same principle, we're printing out uh, the number of fields we have and then using a for loop um, we are printing out the actual names of those fields. So let's run the program like so. As you can see, there are two fields in this class, animal name and animal age. And you have their type just before. Keep in mind that <coughs> in this case, our fields are public, but if we were to make them private, uh, you'd see that they are not um, they can't be inspected. 
So now they're private, let's try it again, and as you can see, there are zero fields in this class. So keep in mind that the fields have to be public in order to inspect them. So that's how you use um, reflection in Java.